This is the first of the two-part video on pancreatic neuroendocrine tumours. I regularly treat this condition at a university teaching hospital, which is also a centre of excellence. What can you expect from the videos? I will break the topic down so it is easy to understand the basics, why the neuroendocrine tumours, also called NET, are different, what symptoms might patients get, how do we measure malignant potential, and what is the staging of the pancreatic neuroendocrine tumours. In the second video, we will learn about the diagnosis, treatment, and finally I'll reveal a very famous person who suffered this condition and sadly passed away. So let's go. So let's look at this cartoon. You can see the liver over here that produces bile that comes down this tube is stored in gallbladder which squirts it down and then this bile enters the small bowel. This is the gullet, the stomach, where the food enters, it's churned down and passed down into the small bowel. At the back of the stomach is the gland called the pancreas, which is of interest. The pancreas has two important functions. The first is production of enzymes that digest the food. So over here you can see these little ducts connected to the cells that produce a clear fluid called the pancreatic juice, which is then passed into the main tube, and then this tube squirts it down to meet with the food and digest it. 90% of the digestion is because of these glands throughout the pancreas. This is called the exocrine function of pancreas. Then there are groups of cells which are quite separate from these and these produce hormones. Now what are hormones? Hormones are chemicals that are passed directly from these cells into blood vessels and finally into this vein and then taken to the rest of the body because these will have effects far removed from the area where these are produced. And what are these hormones that are produced over here? So these hormones include insulin, and several others with very specific functions like glucagon will reverse the action of insulin, gastrin increases the acid production, somatostatin has action on the gut including pancreas by reducing secretions and VIP is a condition associated with significant diarrhea. Common variety of pancreatic cancer is in the exocrine glands as depicted over here which are throughout the pancreas and connected to the duct. When cancers arise in the endocrine cells, those that produce hormones, this condition is then called a neuroendocrine tumor because these tumors are fundamentally different from those that are connected to the duct called ductal adenocarcinoma. So now that we know that these tumors arise in the tissue that fundamentally produces chemicals called hormones which are active and have different functions but removed from where they are. See what symptoms does pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors produce. There are essentially two varieties, those that are called functional, i.e. those that are active, and these tumors are out of control and they produce certain specific chemicals as well as forming a mass. And then there are those that do not produce any chemicals, but are tumors nonetheless. So let's see what symptoms do functional tumors produce. These are hormone producing tumors. The non-functional tumors are more common with pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors. And the common ones amongst these are the insulinoma and the gastrinoma. As the name suggests, insulinoma produces very high levels of insulin, and you can expect the symptoms because blood glucose levels drop quite drastically, giving rise to palpitation, fretiness, nervousness, nervousness and anxiety, fit, and patients may even pass out. Gastrinoma has a direct effect on the stomach and it increases acid production, giving rise to ulcers which are very difficult to treat. There are several other rarer functional pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors with their own symptom complex. I don't want to go into that. And it is it isn't uncommon for these to be diagnosed quite late, often taken several years because of the rarity of these tumors and the symptoms they produce may not readily indicate the cause. Okay, so what about the non-functional tumors? The great majority of these do not cause any symptoms for a very long time until they get quite big and can actually be palpated in the abdomen. The one important determinant is the site of the tumor. So for instance, if the tumor arises in this part of the pancreas, it may impinge on the bile tube causing jaundice and it may also impinge on the pancreatic tumor tube or duct which stops the enzymes going through so the patients may then end up presenting with jaundice because of obstruction to the bowel tube and fatty diarrhea called statorrhea due to the blockage of the pancreatic tube. There may be some tumors may often present with abdominal pain which is high up in the belly and may radiate through to the back or to the flanks, worse on lying down. Due to the length of time these tumors take, symptoms may arise from their spread to the liver which is a common site of metastases or spread, and these can get bigger, giving rise to pain below the rib cage on the right side. The nets, as they are often called, are different for three main reasons. 
Firstly, the clinical behavior is a wide spectrum. And the majority of these quite slow growing so that it may be years before they come to light. But these do not normally behave like the normal variety of cancers that we see certainly in the pancreas. No other cancers produce hormones or chemically active compounds and these have the propensity of doing so. And finally, there is a genetic component. Some of these neuroendocrine tumors such that they may form clusters that happen in families called multiple endocrine neoplasia, which may involve tumors at multiple sites, such as the pancreas gland, the pituitary, and the parathyroid gland. Okay, so how do we measure the malignant potential of these tumors? How malignant are they as they are just described that these tumors have a variety of behavior? For this to happen, it is really important that we have a biopsy specimen that we can examine. This cannot be done short of taking a biopsy of these tumors. And this material is then examined under a microscope. And what we are looking for is how quickly is one tumor cell dividing into two and how quickly is our these further dividing. So if there is evidence of less than 2% of these cells dividing, then that is a good prognosis tumor. That's a very slow growing tumor. And then there is intermediate between 2 to 20%. And finally, poor prognosis tumors of greater than 20%. Similarly, when we look at this material, we try to identify whether this material is very closely related to the kind of cells that it originated from, that is called a well differentiated, or whether it has started to degenerate, and that is moderate, when it has no correlation to the kind of tissue it originated from, then that is poorly differentiated tumor. Hence, the grade and the differentiation gives us a good idea about the malignant potential of this tumor, and this helps in making a a decision about treatment options and we'll discuss this in the second video in the series. The staging of pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors is fairly similar to the more common variety of the pancreatic tumor. It is described as TNM. T is for the tumor and from T1 to T4 depending on increasing tumor size from 2 centimeters to 4 centimeters or whether or not it involves surrounding organs such as the stomach, the duodenum or the blood vessels. N is spread to the lymph node so I've drawn these little tissue these little stations of tissue which have function in immunity and they tend to catch cancer cells as well and whether or not there is spread M is for metastasis distant spread to the liver or other organs liver is the commonest site and derived from this is the stages one to four with stage four involving distant spread metastases because these are slow growing tumors the treatment of these significantly different to the common variety of ductal adenocarcinoma and I will explain this in the second video this ends the first part and for diagnosis and treatment please see the second video in the series